This is the third week in Lent, and the theme that Donald McKim puts forward in his book, Living into Lent, for us to consider is the theme of loving. On Sunday, we heard words that Jesus said that are recorded by the gospel writer in John, in which he gives us a new commandment. He says, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you ought to love one another. We turn now to other verses that are found in the gospel according to John. This is from the third chapter, verses 16 and 17. Let us listen for God's word. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. John three sixteen, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. John 3, 16. Perhaps you learned it very much this way when you were in your primary Sunday school class back in the day, and you learned to make the citation right at the beginning, say the verse, and then recite it once again, all in King James Version. Perhaps you've sung it in John Stainer's much beloved anthem. Certainly, most of you, if not all of you who are watching and listening to this video, have seen it placarded at various sporting events. The verse is much loved by many, many Christians around the world. And our love for it often is not connected to the context in which the words were uttered and as they are presented in the gospel according to John, which is when the Pharisee Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night, but rather we're drawn into the rhythm of these verses. The verses seem to us to become background music for our faith. And perhaps John 3.16 as background music might be precisely what our divided world is most longing to hear during these days of Lent in 2021. Now, I invite you to imagine now that you are coming home from work to your house. Uh, you come into the kitchen walking through from your garage 
into the bedroom to change into something more comfortable. And as you pass that little device that's sitting on the counter, you say, Alexa, play me some music. Play me some Bach. Play me some smooth jazz. Play me some oldies from the 80s. You continue on into your room and change into something that's more comfortable and then you come back into the kitchen. You open the fridge and get ready to prepare dinner and as you do almost mechanically you pick up the remote and you click on the television. The news is on. Maybe you're watching CNN or Fox News or MSNBC or the PBS News Hour, or perhaps even the local news, and the images flit across the screen. What you see there are images of children at the U.S.-Mexico border. You see the faces of suffering citizens in Myanmar. And just as those images are flitting across the screen, you become aware of the background music, perhaps the swell of brass catches your attention. But it's just for a moment and you go back to preparing dinner. And as that preparation continues, once again, your attention is caught by the images on the television screen. This time you see members of the House of Representatives in South Carolina debating a hate crimes bill. And following that, you see images of people with pre-existing health conditions bemoaning how they have been unable to persuade both political and health officials to allow them to get the vaccine. And then once again, the music comes to the forefront from you. And that music is now perhaps the wafting music of violins lifting you to the heavens. Well, later on that evening, <clears throat> after the dishes are all loaded into the dishwasher, you find that you can't shake the images that you've seen on the screen as you usually do. But in some mysterious and inexplicable way, they are connected to that background music that you've heard as you've gone about your customary routine in the evening. And the evening continues. You do the laundry, you fold it, you oversee some homework, you check your email on your iPhone one last time before you start to get ready to go to bed. And you find yourself in a reflective mood. Rather than simply shrugging your shoulders and thinking, ah, oh, well, that's just the way that it is. It is what it is. You find yourself led into a deep prayer. A prayer for the president, and for our governor. Prayers for people who find themselves passionately on both sides of the abortion debate and the immigration issue. Praying that somehow, through the grace and leading of God's own Holy Spirit, all might come together to find a way that serves the common good. When this happens, then you are being brought close to the spirit of John 3.16. For God so loved the world that God gave God's only son so that the world might be saved. In the days in which John recorded these words, those who would have been the first readers of his words viewed the world as a place where there were the stark contrasts between light and darkness, 
truth and falsehood, life and death. However, John's words, while he probably may have been tempted to fall into saying, well, that's just the way it is. It is what it is, and nothing could be done about it. He also know, knew the truth of Jesus Christ, and that God's giving of God's own Son holds within it the promise that darkness, falsehood, death does not have the last word. The last word belongs to love. Amen. Let us pray. Creator God, giver of all good things, for our home on earth and for your unfailing mercy, we give you thanks. Christ our Redeemer, for your sacrifice on the cross and rising from death that we might live, we give you thanks and praise. Holy Spirit, giver of life, for your abiding presence in our lives and for comforting and guiding us. We give you thanks, praise, and glory. Nurture us, O God, as we continue to live and to Lent. Forgive our sin and help us to love you and to love our neighbor as ourselves, demonstrating in word and deed the love with which you loved the world. Amen. And now may you go in peace into your day.